Shop Talk 31. 31. <laughs> Welcome to Shop Talk 31. We have no sap sucker today. Sap, hashtag sap sucker if you want to support us. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag great. Wa just water. Water's great. I love yeah. water, but that sap sucker was nice. Um, okay, today. Liquid water, no doubt. No, uh, no, you want? Yeah. Uh, Better Speaking of which, outside. maybe the spring will come soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we can only hope. Yeah. Uh, so last week after we were finished our discussion on, um, what was it last week? Oh, follow it, like build a guitar that you want to build. Yeah. Uh, you know. Despite what the market is. Yeah. Yeah. I started thinking about uh, areas where, well, one in particular. So a cutaway. Yeah. I am not a fan of cutaways. I would never put a cutaway necessarily on my guitar aesthetically. Mm -hmm. I don't like the look of it. But I started thinking, I am going to put a cutaway on a guitar. If I ever yeah, get around to building a new guitar, I caved. You caved. Why did you cave? Because for some people's playing style, Maybe. a cutaway makes sense. Especially on electric guitars. Especially on electric guitars. Although I don't envision my guitars necessarily being played by people who are up you right. know, in the... I hope not, because I don't even have that many frets on it, so I haven't played that part <laughs> out very well, <laughs> if I am. I have a shorter fretted guitar than yours. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, less frets. Same distance, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so why would I be with... Well, in that case, it's, it's not a case of integrity. I just dislike the look mm -hmm. of it. But yeah. it doesn't change... I can still make a decent cutaway, I hope. I haven't designed it yet. Um, that I like, that'll be useful. So I think there are times to give in to, we could call it market pressure, but even just instead of giving in to market pressure, giving in to the fact that some people have that requirement. Yeah, or adapting your design, right. even if you think it's gonna, if, if it's gonna detract from your, your aesthetics a yeah. little bit. Now, do I have to though? Well, yeah, you, well, you don't. No, you so could. like I'm waffling back and forth. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I could just not build. Yeah, and, and if they need a cutaway, they can buy somebody else's guitar. There's yeah. lots of cut guitars with yeah. cutaways. So this shop talk is about when to cave in to yeah. market pressure, or when, you know, oh, yeah. Where's that line? Yeah, and it could be different for every guitar right. maker. When can you still be yourself and yeah. give the customer? Mm -hmm. Maybe something that you wouldn't necessarily put on there what they want. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, I I'm, Yeah, I'm still like that whole cutaway idea. It's still I go back and forth I think I kind of like the idea of having a guitar of my own though that I can play a pair. With a cutaway. Yeah mm -hmm. for myself. So I'm like Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because I think a lot of people that buy the high-end guitars They want a lot of versatility. Yeah, so that cutaway could be the selling that could, that could be the the right. selling but, feature. That but you last. notice I didn't even say for selling. I said for myself, I want to play with right. my yeah. guitar, <laughs> which is kind yeah. of like being yeah. true to myself. Yeah. I can see where I would want mm -hmm. from time to time to have that. So I think it's it's a yeah. nice thing to have. So at this point, you'd say, okay, so you want a cutaway. Yeah. How can you make that? Work right. with your design. With my that's that's, that's the, where the way to approach it. Yeah. And I think it is different too though. Um with a lot of guitar makers that are making one off guitars. Yeah. One after the other. Yeah. You can do something completely different that's not quite as uh as market uh driven. Yeah, market driven. Because there's only one guitar like it. Right. You only have to sell one. But if you're doing something like uh, like for example, my, the Ember series, yeah. I I want to make it so that a lot of people would like it. Mm. So I. It's funny that you bring that up mm -hmm. because I was thinking about that after as well. Uh -huh. So what have you done that makes it so that lots of people would like it? Um, well, there are a lot of things. <laughs> First right. of all, why don't you grab it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry to bring this back up again, but this is really like exciting times in our shop here um, and uh, there yeah there's a lot of thinking that has to go into something okay so what are some things that maybe you've done on here that you wouldn't necessarily have done if you weren't trying to 
make it work for a larger um well audience. okay so the, the aesthetic obviously i spend a lot of time on aesthetics but right. i know that for this guitar i want the the vintage vibe aesthetic to be mm -hmm. throughout the guitar um and that's because vintage that's, is in right i i like it yeah i i want people to understand <laughs> we're not making a vintage style looking stuff because this is what's selling i mean no we yeah. honestly i honestly just love this vibe this is yeah. what excites me about guitars and if i look at mm -hmm. old guitars, it's not because they're lighter or because they were magic and made out of magic wood <laughs> yeah i just love that look mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> um okay so the slotted head of course that's an aesthetic choice mm. because uh, it, honestly it's actually easier to find better tuners for mm. uh, the flat the peg heads yeah which is an interesting choice so I would have gone flat myself yeah and, and, and I did I, on the one that I built mm -hmm. if we were first starting this whole process yes yeah. uh, but I mean the slotted head looks cool it looks vintage I yeah think. Um, what else it has 24 frets why do you need 24 frets you don't no. But it's cool. Yeah. It has two octaves. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so that's, that's, I mean, um. But you can't access it because you have no cutaway. Yeah, it's, it's an elevated fingerboard, so you kind of can. Right. Uh, um, but yeah, it's true. It's hard to access up here. Right. But you can, in a pinch, you can go 24 frets if you want. Um, the other big thing is my first Ember Dang. Series guitar, yeah. it didn't have a pick guard, which that's is great right. for me. That's, this is a good, a good yeah. point to this bring up. This is huge, because I put a pick guard on mine, <laughs> loved it, couldn't go without it. Yeah. And yeah, and you did I, I didn't need a pick guard. No, you didn't even want a pick guard. No, I actually, I like the you aesthetic of without this it. without. I mean, I think I've worked it into the design okay, but um, I, I don't like awesome. the look as much. I think it looks better. <laughs> yeah. No, there is something beautiful about the whole thing being, I, I understand, yeah. but... Uh, but the reason I went with the pick guard is because the strings are so far from the top. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that so many players anchor their pinky on the top yeah. as they play. Or they reference their playing with, with something to do with yeah. like, the top. No, I definitely would. <clears throat> yeah, so that pick guard is basically... Um, the height of a standard guitar top, mm -hmm. the distance from the strings is the same. So that was an important consideration, I think, um, to... But then that's where you made it because of other people's playing styles or yeah. because of what other people would like. You made that ad adaptation yeah. to, to this. Whereas you could make, if you were making one off, knockoff, you probably wouldn't have put that on there. No, yeah. You know, if you were just building one of these, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I would. I don't know. Well, you didn't. No, I didn't. Did the no. first one, I didn't. No. All right. Um, <clears throat> what else did yeah. you put on this one that you didn't put on your first one? I, I had an adjustable bridge. Right. Because people like to be able to adjust. I like the adjustable bridge. I, I think that's cool. I like it too, except it adds some mass, mass to the bridge, yeah. which I think does make a big difference to the sound or like not not a big difference, yeah, but love, it makes I love how you said difference. big difference. I love it when people go, it's extreme, it's big. I couldn't tell the difference, but it's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually watched a video recently where people were talking about tone woods. Oh, yeah. And they talked about the massive difference between the two tone woods. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, there is differences, uh -huh. I'm sure, between tone woods, and you can uh -huh. hear it. But honestly, have you tested the, the thickness of those? Woods, have you tested everything else yeah. that may have also affected I, yeah. My problem is not that these things make a difference. Mm -hmm. My problem is, is that it's only one, one of, example. <laughs> one <laughs> of a bunch of things that each, because you can't put it on the same exact guitar. Yeah, it's hard to control. The th there's just one variable in the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just don't ever attribute anything to one part change. Yeah. There's no one thing you can make different that will change your guitar to become a great guitar or not. Mm -hmm. It is a collection of. Yeah. Anyway, that was my yeah. rant for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other <laughs> thing is uh, the pickup. Huge. I... Huge. <laughs> Let's listen to this. Oh, well, we don't have to. Come on. Okay. All right. This. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. So, oh but, yeah! <laughs> Woo! I, the reason I put a pickup in is not because I wanted a pickup. No. Uh, I actually prefer uh, a, an interior pickup. So my original plan was to put uh, K and K with with the two transducers on there. Right. Uh, similar similar to an arch top. Yeah. Uh, but a gold foil um, single coil pickup. It looks really cool and it really fits this vibe and the sound. I feel like people that would be interested in this kind of guitar are gonna be excited by the fact that there's a single coil gold yeah. foil pickup on there. Hand yeah. mound. And the sound. <clears throat> and the sound, yeah. Actually I, I plugged it in and I it it was inspiring. Yes. Yeah. Uh credit to Matt Meranger. Matt Moran yeah. Matt and Maranger. Yeah. Uh, who wound wow, those ones? Great, yeah. I, they sound great. Honestly, like to me, when the pickup goes in there, mm -hmm. makes it a whole like more. Ex there you go. Yeah. yeah. More exciting guitar. It's yeah. like, yeah, I love a pickup on a guitar. I don't know. It just makes me so so yeah. excited. Mm -hmm. And you, like, you don't even have one on your first one. Yeah. At all, and you don't need it. But now it makes me second view. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the part. Like yeah. watching you put it in and try some stuff on it, and then you're like, "Oh, this opens a whole new world." A whole new <laughs> world. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Where, what were we talking about? Pickups. Oh, right. <laughs> Not <laughs> Disney. Okay. Um, yeah. A whole new world is opened up to you in your playing style. Like it changes how you play this very oh, yeah. guitar. Absolutely. Plugged in is a little different than you know. It's just fun and it wasn't something that you kind of had on your radar before mm -hmm. building this you were just using it to kind of make your sound bigger yeah whereas this is like it changes the vibe yeah like you see it when i turn that up like oh, i'm just gonna uh. yeah mm. <laughs> yeah uh, so anyway so i thought this was a great example of where you've made some some yeah some adaptations to what you would have first have thought you were going to do yeah and i think not for a better guitar, but for a, it's a fun, different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's mainly what is different, like, or what I adapted for this guitar. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's like any other guitar. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah, just, well, I mean, it's also cut, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, yeah, are there any things, though, that, like, uh, where you've been tempted to try something and it's like after you've thought about it you just went nah uh, like a sound port yeah yeah like semi hemispheric fret ends not sound ports I love sound ports oh right <laughs> <laughs> semi what semi hemispheric fret ends mm. I will do a vi video on this because they're bogus I, I really I, yeah um, huh. I think they say that they're they're more comfortable to play, but more comfortable how? <laughs> that's what doesn't make sense to me because a semi hemispheric fret end actually sticks out more on the on the edge of the frets. Um, if if this is a massive fret, right? They stick out more than a tapered. Yeah, tapered right. uh, fretboard, so, and you actually have more playing space on the top of the frets. Mm. before it drops off right. on like a regular tapered uh, fret end. So there's a market, for some reason, that's kind of gone crazy so, in the market. Okay, and you're going to draw a picture of that and show <coughs> I, that on a uh, video at some point. Yeah, I will yeah, do a video. That'll be cool. Yeah. Um, but okay. basically, there's, there's a good example of something that's in the market that people say is great, but I am not going to do it because it... it I think it takes away from the playability of an instrument, which right. is one of the most important aspects. So that's a, that's something that you just wouldn't do. Well, um, even if they really really want it, if they really really want it, no. yeah, I'll do it. No, don't give in. <laughs> don't cave. <laughs> but I have well, there, I have a customer right now who who has ordered a guitar, and he asked about semi hemispheric yeah. friends, and I just explained it to him. Illustrated yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And of course, when when you illustrate something like that. It makes it pretty obvious. Right. Um, 
and I think that's the that's the only thing I can do. Right. Uh, and I think it's the right thing to do. I yeah. wish I wish guitar makers actually did that more often because there are a lot of guitar makers that just uh, say okay. Well, and, but they don't explain the repercussions or full width liner. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, sturdier guitar. Yeah. If you do, if you use a lighter wood inside, it's you know it's gonna it's not really gonna add that much weight. Yeah. But it affects the sound of the guitar. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more than the tone wood, I'm sorry to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like it, it makes a huge difference, as far as I'm concerned, mm. from what I've heard. Uh, maybe other people have gotten it to work differently, but the way that you made them, and yeah. the way it sounds is it's big. Yeah. Uh, again, it's not necessarily a a bad thing. Yeah. But it is an area where if you think, oh, I'll just make it like that because people want it and it's it's in right now. Mm -hmm. But then your guitars don't sound the same as what you had expected them to sound like because yeah. it does affect the sound. Yeah. Yeah. And what that's, else? that's, that's uh, with sticking to what you want. Yeah. Like sound-wise. Sound-wise, yeah. I, I think that's critical, right? Yeah. There's aesthetics, but this, the sound is like, if you're not getting a sound that you're happy with, mm -hmm. Forget about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What else is a uh, a market pressure? Brazilian rosewood. Yeah, is a good example. I mean, um, wait, we're talking about when to cave to. Br yeah. Yeah. What yeah, anything but, else that you would uh, you have yeah, caved in? I think we've given some good examples. You know, the plugins. Uh, yeah. Maybe a cutaway. What else could we cave in on? Um, Slotted heads. <laughs> yeah, I love slides. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's those are the main ones. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, I mean, there's lots. I'm sure that other people would come up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, inlays. Well, I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't know. That's a whole other topic. Yeah. Aesthetic changes to an instrument um, that affect the sound, or or just make the instrument not look like. A treehouse guitar, or oh right, um, yeah, yeah, right. But there are t some aesthetic things that you could be that you're like, well, I don't really like it, but would you do it? Yeah, that's the tricky part. Mm -hmm. I think it brings me back again. You yeah. know, if I don't really want a guitar with a cutaway, mm -hmm. it does change the playability mm -hmm. in certain styles, and it does change the the look. Mm -hmm. Do I give, cave in? I still don't know. <laughs> you still don't know. No, I know for myself so, I'm going to because I want yeah. it. I want one yeah. of my own right. that's made that way. So I guess other people would too and I couldn't yeah. make it work. So this whole shop talk was just to get to, get me to, to, to decide yeah. whether to put a shop exactly. away <laughs> in a guitar or Exactly. Not. But I think it worked, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. What are some, I, I'd like to hear. Yeah, I would love to hear, talk. like, yeah. Anything that you've heard of that we should... What do you think is, is something that you need to do to, to, uh, to sell your guitars? Right. That you might not want to do. Right. But it doesn't, it's just your... Because you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or any, um, anything that you've heard of that you're thinking, should I try that? And you're not sure of. Yeah. You know? We'd love to look at stuff like that as well. Also, um, uh, new topics too. Yeah. We're always looking for new topics. Any new topics? Shop talks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. That is <laughs> Shop for Talk us. number 31. And we'll see you next week. Over and out.